Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we'll start the uh, Lenten series, as I, I told you last week, is that we will uh, study the series, and I called it the Spiritual Ladder, and we heard it from St. Peter's second epistle, in chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, where he said, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. So um, today is the first one, virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge all self-control, and then the rest of the verses, and each week we'll have one of the steps that we will help us achieve um, our oneness with the Lord. So what is a virtue? If you Google the word virtue, you will, you will find many things, but in the dictionary, it's, um, it is described as it is a behavior showing high moral standards. It is a behavior showing high moral standards. Also, some synonyms, it's goodness, righteousness, morality, uprightness, integrity, dignity, honesty, honor, many, many things. Truthworthiness, and the antonym or the the opposite of virtue is vice or iniquity. So virtue is a good behavior that's portraying what's inside of me. It is not an, an outward expression because we can act. Uh, we can do things that are favorable, approved by outsiders. But still, we have a disconnect be between the, the inside and the outside. But the virtue is an act that expresses what's inside, which is integrity, truthworthiness, as I mentioned. And today, for example, in the uh, readings in the gospel, we heard about two virtues. One is integrity, one is content. Integrity, when we heard, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You, you cannot serve God and money. Integrity, being um, truthful to your life path, being genuine, being coherent, What's inside is what's on the outside. I have no double-minded. I have no double heart. Of course, it is not an ultimate. Um, it, is, it is not um, something that we acquire now, today, or tomorrow. It is a lifelong journey. And content, the virtue of content, um, Therefore, I say to you, do, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? So there's another virtue. It's being content, being satisfied with what I have, with who I am. It does not mean that I will not stop improving or growing in my uh, education, in my business, in my success, but this growth becomes more meaningful and purposeful when I am content. My value is not in what I acquire. My value is who I am. Again, and we, we can go back to the virtue of integrity. However, today, um, I want to speak a little bit about the virtue of silence. Of course, in the Bible, there are tens of virtues. 
But today, let's talk about the virtue of being silent. In the epistle of St. James today, we heard, let everyone be um, quick to listen, slow to speak. And we, most of us, we are the other way around. We are so quick to speak and we are so slow to listen. So what is the virtue of silence? Um, as I was looking, I, 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 I fell upon the sayings of Mother Teresa and she had um, a, a, a profound um, short writing about silence. I'll just read a few lines of it. She said that practice the silence of the eyes by seeking always the beauty and goodness of God everywhere and closing them to the faults of others and to all that is sinful and disturbing to the soul. The silence of the eyes. What a profound way to say it. Can I train my eyes to be quiet, to be silent, to be quick to see and seek the beauty of the creation of people, of the goodness that God has put in people around me, and to be slow or close them to the faults and mistakes of others and the sin that is disturbing me everywhere. Silence your eyes. And now, any virtue is, um, does have a purpose. We do not seek virtues because it is um, a goal in and, and of itself. It's a tool, it is a ladder that will get me closer to my Lord and to be like him. Remember last week we, we talked about we are all called to be like Jesus, his imitation. So to be like him more is to train your eyes to see the beauty and those around you. He saw the beauty in the Samaritan, the woman that was judged by the society, that was called the sinner, maybe a harlot, living with five and husbands or, or have moved between five men. But he did not see that. He saw the goodness that she had in herself because she was his daughter, she was his creation. He saw the potential of the, of the man born blind. He saw the beauty in Zacchaeus that was short, judged, rejected by his own people. Can I train my eyes to be silent? Maybe start in this Lent season. And by the way, whatever we start in the Lent, we don't stop when we finish <laughs> fasting. It is a training camp to continue post-Lent, to continue throughout our life. Number two, the silence of the ears. She said, silence your ears by listening always to the voice of God and to the cry of the poor and the needy and closing them to all other voices that come from fallen human nature, such as gossip, tale-bearing, and uncharitable words. Silence your ears. We are so quick to hear the mistakes of other people. A matter of fact, there's a deep, I don't know how to call it, but if I psychoanalyze it, <laughs> There's a deep need inside of us to 
I guess when we hear about the mistakes of other people, it tells me that I'm on the right path or, or I am better than them. A matter of fact, the more I am busy listening about others' mistake, I have no more time left to focus on my own faults. Silence your ears. Number three, silence of the tongue. By praising God and speaking the life-giving words of God, that is the truth that enlightens and inspires, brings peace, hope, and joy. And by refraining from self-defense and every word that causes darkness, turmoil, pain, and death. Watch your tongue. We heard this a lot from St. James and his epistle. A tongue can cause a fire. A tongue can cause divorce. A tongue can cause... Um, so many problems between parents and children, between partners, between friends, between co-workers. Tongue is a, a weapon that, it, that is, it, it, if it's let loose, it will destroy the person in front of you. So watch your tongue because when you speak, you speak the words of the Lord. And put yourself on the other in the other person's shoes. What would you feel if you hear the words you are telling that person? What would you feel if you hear the thoughts that you think about that other person? Silence of the tongue. St. John Saba, uh, he is known as uh, the spiritual elder, our sheikh. Rouhani, he said that silence your tongue for your heart to speak and silence your heart for God to speak. The more you are still, the more you are silent with your tongue, the better your heart will be able to speak. Speak words of praise, words of encouragement and when you silent your heart God will speak to you silence of the mind by opening it to the truth and knowledge of God in prayer and contemplation like Mary who pondered the marvels of the Lord in her heart and by closing it to all untruths distractions, destructive thoughts, rash judgments. Don't we all fall into rash judgments? Quick judgments without really knowing what's going on. False suspicions of others, vengeful thoughts and desires. Silence your mind. We all complain that our minds are roaming everywhere. I am distracted everywhere. I'm distracting all time, all day. I can't keep my mind silent. Maybe this is a good way in Lent that you would practice to silent your mind. My baby, practice less judgment, less worry. And the last one, silence of the heart. By loving God with our heart, our soul, our mind and strength. Loving one another as God loves. And avoiding all selfishness, hatred, envy, jealousy and greed. Loving one another as God loves. If you have experienced how God loves you, can you start to practice loving other people the same way. How? I think it's, it's explained here by avoiding all selfishness. Love is against selfishness. <clears throat> Maybe you want to think about how much you love yourself. 
versus you love the other people in your life. How much you seek your comfort on the account of their comfort. How much you seek to do your agenda on the account of their goodwill and well-being. So these are the virtues of silence. And there are many, many virtues. But if we go back to the definition, a virtue is integrity, truthworthiness, purity, genuineness, good work, good person. And we can speak about all these virtues um, in worldly terms. Everybody speaks about love and peace and good work. But what would make your virtue eternal is that it's from and for the Lord himself. Instead of being self-righteousness and boasting about your own goodness, no, I am receiving the goodness from my Lord and I am transmitting it to other people. I am only a channel. And in the process, I am getting purified more and more and more until I am one with the Lord. How come I expect to be with God in, in heaven when I die and I don't know love, I don't know peace, I don't know reconciliation, I don't know mercy, I don't know whatever quality Jesus has. How come I expect to live forever with him and earn eternal life and I'm so far away from his own characteristics? This is why when I am as a Christian seeking good works, seeking to live a life of virtues, it's not from my own self-righteousness. No, it is because I sit at his feet every day, I pour down my iniquities, my unrighteousness, and receive whatever he has for me. And maybe number one is love. And it will not be achieved unless I am quiet. So maybe in this land, practice having a quiet moment every day. We're not asking to ha have an hour this week, but start by just 10 minutes today and for next week. Only 10 minutes. Go into your room, turn off the light, put your phone outside of your room, silence everything, light a candle if you want, and just being silent. Do not say anything. Train your mind to be quiet again. Just 10 minutes. And I'm sure in this 10 minutes, you, you will be distracted in, 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 in the first day. You will be bored, maybe. You will be looking at your watch. And this is why also leave your watch outside the room. <laughs> but day after day, you will learn how to be quiet, silent, and in the silence, God will speak to you. He will remind you with something you heard, a, a verse, an event that he spoke to you, little by little. Maybe this is the first week, and the second week, add five more minutes. And by the way, there is an app for that. Do you know that? <laughs> okay, I'm not promoting it, but it is really nice app. It's uh, about meditation and mindfulness. It's called Headspace. Okay, now I'm not, I'm not receiving any royalty from it or anything, but it is a good one, and it has a two weeks free trial. <laughs> Why not? It is a guided meditation. It works especially in, in our busy day and busy life that we, our life, maybe my day revolves around texting, emailing, 
browsing, talking about people, talking with people, and I have and I'm I'm left with no time for myself. So maybe try that. Or try anything that will help you quiet. The Lord Himself, after a busy day of miracles and feeding the multitude, we read that a he left all and went on the mountain to be with himself. Allow yourself to be with yourself. And learn how to say no. I am busy in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> in the next 15 minutes, don't knock on my door. I guess there's another virtue of saying no. We can talk about it later, but start by little steps. So this is the first step, virtue, okay? I hope we will, uh, this week, we'll uh, work on it, and then in the next week, we'll talk about the next one. To him, all glory forever, amen.